All right, this lecture is going to be an introduction to high performance computing. Uh, I'm sorry, an introduction to parallel programming in the context of our, our HPC class here at UTSA. So, just some terminology. Of course, you may have heard me say these words before in other lectures or in the class, but I just want to go ahead and clarify some of the terminology that we'll use in, in HPC. So, first of all, uh, the word node is what you typically think of as a standalone computer, and in fact, it it could be in a in a particular type of grid networked uh, supercomputer. It could actually be a, a desktop computer, uh, and so this is comprised of you know the many CPUs that are now in our modern uh, computers and the memory and everything. So nodes are then networked together to form a supercomputer. So uh, again, these could be in a grid distributed across, uh, you know, on people's desktops across the world that are connected to one another, or they could all sit in a room together uh, in a rack, essentially as little blades uh, that are connected through a very high-speed uh, network interface. Um, either way, you can kind of use the term supercomputer to to convey uh, this connection of of nodes. <clears throat> so then, uh, this should be CPU. Um, and there's some other words that, that are, you know, basically synonyms, uh, socket, processor, core. This is a little bit confusing, and they're not strictly synonyms, but for the purposes of our class, they will be. So this is a singular execution component in a computer or in a node. So nowadays, of course, <coughs> uh, our, our computers typically have multi-core processors. Uh, sometimes they have multi-socket, multi-core processors. So, uh, I, for instance, uh, Shamu actually has eight cores per node, and I believe those are two quad-core sockets. Um, so, for the for the purposes of this class, we're going to use the, the word you know processor or core uh, to be basically the same thing or CPU. <coughs> so. Uh, then a task is a, logis a logically discrete section of computational work that we want to do. And so typically we'll break our code up into particular tasks, send them off to separate nodes, separate processors uh, to have work performed on them, on them simultaneously. So this is the kind of notion of a parallel program, is a collection of these tasks that we're then going to send off to uh, a bunch of cores, processors that exist on nodes. Uh, that, that form a supercomputer. So there's a couple of different types of parallel architectures. Uh, one being shared memory. These are uh, somewhat less common. So this is where you would uh, have a series of CPUs or many CPUs uh, that would uh, have access to the same cache of memory. And memory here is basically RAM. Uh, you know, we're not talking about hard disk space. We're we're talking about you know random access memory uh, that the CPUs have you know can quickly access. And uh, nowadays, a uh, lot you might hear people talk about doing computations on GPUs, graphic processing units. And GPUs are actually a form of a shared memory. Uh, they're they're typically a little bit different uh, than what I have drawn here, but they're a form of a shared memory. Uh, architecture. The more common is a distributed memory architecture, and this is basically what I described earlier, where you have uh, CPUs that have individual CPUs that have uh, access to their own memory and then they're networked together. So each of these kind of would represent a, a node, if you will, uh, with one CPU that has access to its own memory. Nowadays, it's becoming more and more common that we actually have hybrid uh, architectures, and this is m the most representative of Shamu here, uh, in that uh, you know each node uh, has its own series of, of uh, CPUs. In this case, eight for every node, and then they're all networked together. Um, but also becoming increasingly more common is to not only have CPUs but to have graphic processor units. Uh, on chip uh, that share memory with uh, the CPUs. Uh, this, these are your, your integrated graphics and uh, CPU cards that are coming out and it's like, say, the new 
Uh, Macintosh has a lot of the new in Intel chips, the Sandy Bridge chips, and otherwise have this type of architecture. <coughs> So the way the, 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 pro, the programming models that we use to take advantage of these um, are different. And um, for shared memory, we would use uh, some models like POSIX Threads or OpenMP or more recently OpenACC, which will one day probably uh, consume OpenMP or unify them, rather. We're going to talk about a little bit later in the class about uh, you know some of these these programming models. Uh, for general purpose graphics processing unit, uh, you have CUDA, which is, stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. This is an application programming interface that was actually put out by the the manufacturer Nvidia to uh, write parallel kernels for their actual the, you know their hardware their GPUs. <coughs> Uh, OpenCL stands for Open Compute Language. It's another API that has the backing of Apple and several other companies to basically uh, do, perform the same type of tasks, yet not, not confined to simply NVIDIA cards. Uh, NVIDIA supports OpenCL, so you, if you write OpenCL code, it should run on NVIDIA GPUs, uh, but it also supports AMD and the Intel GPUs as well. And then here you see OpenACC appear again. This is a newer uh, API, you know, just released in the last year that, that has the backing of NVIDIA and has the backing of the Portland Compiler Group <coughs> and uh, several other places that are basically trying to unify the way you write parallel code for CPUs and GPUs. Um, OpenCL actually has some of that uh, intention as well. But for di distributed memory systems, uh, MPI is, is the va de facto standard. So MPI is an application programming interface. It is not a language. Uh, it has implementations in C, uh, C++, and Fortran, and then many high-level languages are wrapping these uh, wrappers themselves. and given us implementations in, in other languages, and specifically in Python, which we've used a lot in this class, uh, there's a couple of different implementations, but the best one, in my opinion, is one called MPI for Pi. MPI for Pi is a very, very close one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence in the, in the programming interface to that which is in C. So that if we learn MPI for Pi uh, in Python, and again, you know, we get all the advantages of kind of the simplified syntax uh, and other things that, that we like about Python. Uh, but if we learn MPI for Pi in Python, then it should be very straightforward to learn it in C or C++ because the API is, is almost one for one identical. Uh, the Fortran API is very similar to the C and C++ ones as well. <coughs> So we're going to talk, uh, definitely talk more about MPI. It turns out MPI also works in shared memory machines for CPUs. So if you have multi-core uh, processors, we can use MPI to take advantage of it uh, as if they were distributed. Um, we perhaps don't get the full advantages if, if we would use something like OpenMP. And so this is where the hybrid parallelization comes in. So we use uh, MB MPI to distribute across the network and then maybe we use OpenMP locally to take full advantage of the, th the multi-threading that we can do uh, on uh, m multi-core machines. And again, as I mentioned earlier, kind of OpenCL and, and I guess OpenACC as well are kind of newer um, standards that are evolving to try to, uh, to try to work in these heterogeneous systems where you have distributed memory uh, and then multi-core locally. So there's lots of ways to design, a well, not lots, but there's several ways of design of parallel algorithms. But for engineering context, um, it's almost always uh, this kind of idea of partitioning. So we're going to take a problem data set, and we're going to break it up into several partitions, and then we're going to send each of those off uh, to their own processor as a task to basically be worked on. And this is the common 
Uh, it's the only one I mentioned here because it's, it's, like I said, the most common in engineering applications. Um, I want to reference this. Uh, I want to go ahead and acknowledge that the figures you've seen in this presentation came from this tutorial. And this is a very good tutorial. Uh, I would recommend that you go and read the whole thing. It wouldn't take you, you know, it's it wouldn't take you too long, but it would give you a, a very good overview of the di all the different styles of par parallel computations and provide you with a lot more information than this kind of short introduction that I've given you here. Uh, if you have this PDF slides, this is a, a hyperlink that you could then uh, link to.